Have you ever wanted to start watercolor journaling and you just didn't know where to start? Let me help you with the basics so that you can get started today. Hi, Maria here from MyArtPixie.com and in today's video, I want to help you get started with watercolor journaling. I will show you how to set up your very own watercolor journal and I've provided some prompts to help you get started. So let me grab my watercolor journal, my traveler's watercolor kit, that includes my watercolor brush, and I'm gonna grab my jar of watercolor brushes so that I can show you how we set up for watercolor journaling. Let's go. Let's go ahead and get started and let's talk about the things that you are going to need for watercolor journaling. There's lots of different options. I'm just gonna show you a few and then you can kind of decide what you want to do. So for my watercolor journal prompts, um, I'm going to be using this um, watercolor journal. It's the Handbook Journal Company. If you can see that, Handbook Journal Company. And I got this at Jerry's Artorama. Um, and you can see I started to already work in it. Um, I'm just trying it out. This is a different brand than what I'm used to, but we're gonna give it a go. Um, in the past, I have used the Strathmore um, watercolor series, and it's 140 pounds, um, which is the same as uh, this new one that I got. And I kept this cover on so that I could show you, but this is actually one of my um, watercolor journals that is full, and um, I have a flip through of this. If you're interested, you can go check that out. Um, here's another one. I think it's upside down. Yeah, here's another one um, that I have pretty much filled up and I'm going to get ready to do a, a watercolor flip through with that soon as well. There are other options besides getting a specific watercolor journal. This is a mixed media book and I've done some mixed media in it but I have also done some watercolor in it and you can go um, check this out. This is actually a mixed media piece because I did use pen and ink and some colored pencil as well, but the base of it is watercolor. So when you're working in a mixed media, um, a mixed media paper pad, you could use this as your watercolor journal if you want, especially if you want to go um, a little bigger in size. So speaking of mixed uh, media uh, paper pads, I do have this one from Canson, um, and it has 114 pounds. Now, generally speaking, a watercolor journal, um, a watercolor journal will be 140, and the reason is because you don't want it to buckle. But the great thing about uh, mixed media paper that I have found is that it takes watercolor very well. Um, and I don't find that this buckles um, and I have I have not used it a lot so we'll see how that kind of plays out in the future but you could pick up a mixed media um, paper pad as well I'm gonna set this one aside for just a second and I'd like to show you these handmade watercolor journals so this one is seven by six, and I'm using these smaller discs for the disc bound um, system. So it's just like Happy Planner, what Happy Planner uses, um, the disc bound. Now you can get um, the discs that are not Happy Planner, you can get them on Amazon and, um, and in different sizes. These are, you can see they're two different sizes there. So, um, so I made this one. I also made this one so that I had some landscape watercolor paper. And then I made a larger journal with these really pretty gold discs um, that are also from the Happy Planner. But I made this. And um, so let me kind of explain the process. Okay, so I started with this paper pad that I got at Michael's. It's the Artist Loft 
level two watercolor pad. There's um, 28 pages and it's 140 pound and it already is cut to six by nine, which is the size that I like to use for my watercolor journal. So it works out perfectly. Another option is to take a larger watercolor paper pad and cut your pieces down to size. Depending on the size that I'm going to do, I can get anywhere between two and four pages per paper. Once I have those all cut down to the size that I want, I grab my Happy Planner Disc Bound Punch and um, this creates what you need for the discs that you're going to be using. I have found that the Happy Planner Punch only takes one um, at a time, one piece of paper at a time. So if you want something more industrial, those are available as well. But it does a great job for DIY watercolor journals. So I just punched out some additional sheets of watercolor paper and added them to the journals. And then I went an extra step and created covers. I just took double-sided paper and I laminated them in my Scotch laminator, which I've had for years. And then I just punched these as well. And these papers, if you're interested, I got them at Joann Fabric. They are the Park Lane brand, and I took um, two of the sheets of paper from the Explore pack, and the other piece of paper with the bumblebees came from Peaceful Pasture. So I really like how these turned out and I'm excited to get them filled up with some watercolor um, techniques and things um, which I will be doing on my channel in the future. If you have any questions about how I made these, I mean I think I, I, think I was able to um, describe everything but if you have any questions about that or if I missed something or left something out, let me know and I would love to show you just to say that you don't have to necessarily go out and buy a watercolor journal. You can make your own if you have um, watercolor paper um, readily available. So I have this binder and I've been using it for quite some time. You can pick these binders up at Walmart. They probably have them at Meijer um, and other places like that. I use this to put a lot of my um, ideas for art and so I've kind of named it my creative journal. Um, whenever I have an idea or something like that that I want to get down um, then I'll put it in here and I kind of have them sectioned off. Well this section here um, I have some watercolor paper so that I can make some sketches and all I did was I took the um, I took my regular paper punch and I just adjusted the holes on it so that so I could get this smaller punch so it actually makes it down to five and a half. So it's five and a half inches from the top hole to the bottom hole. And then I just took my watercolor paper and I put it through the hole punch and I added it to my binder. And so now I have some watercolor pages inside of my binder that I could kind of play around with. Now you could make a whole binder with your watercolor paper, which would be super cool. Um, I just have eight or so pieces in there, but you could definitely um, cut or trim multiple pages and put them in there. 
I just cut them down to six by nine pieces of watercolor paper. I put them in my binder. So if you have watercolor paper on hand and you have a binder, you could go ahead and cut them down and put them in here and then you would have um, you, a watercolor journal, but it would be inside of a three ring binder. And then another fun option would be to make your own watercolor journal just by adding staples um, to your paper. Um, and then you could have your own little watercolor journal, kind of like a zine by the time that you have it all um, finished and completed. So lots of options that you can do for watercolor journaling. Um, you don't necessarily have to buy a watercolor journal. Okay, so that just about covers it as far as um, the journal goes. The whole idea about a watercolor journal is that it gives you the freedom to explore watercolor without feeling overwhelmed. Sometimes watercolor can feel very intimidating because um, it is a transparent medium and sometimes people aren't quite sure how to man manipulate it in the best way that works with them. Sometimes it takes years to get the hang of it and everything. So in a journal, and I will actually, I'll pull over my watercolor journal from last year. So this really gave me the freedom to explore you know, different um, different things that I wanted to do. I love to do florals, um, but also just to experience, experiment with the blending techniques and different things like that. Um, also doing different things with abstraction. And then I have these little um, florals that I made and then I went over it with my uh, Micron pens and my Signa white gel pen. Um, so just, it gives you the freedom to just, um, kind of play around and see, you know, what you want to do and how you want to, um, explore this technique. You can do, you know, all kinds of different things and you can, um, have the freedom to do so within a watercolor journal. Okay. So let's talk about the other things that you're going to need. Obviously, you're going to need some paint. Um, these are the um, Cotman, Windsor and Newton Cotman um, a watercolor. You can get these individual, but you can also um, buy them as a group. Um, I just want to show you, I have some of my um, watercolors from college. I like to hang on to things like this, but I want them to be contained. I don't want to just have random stuff everywhere, but I just wanted to show you how fun that looks. And I can still open these up, open this up and use them. Um, but I have all of my old watercolors and they still work. So, so anyway, I just wanted to show you that. I thought that was a lot of fun. And I keep that um, on my shelf in my art studio. Um, but and of course, if you're going to do that, you're going to need a palette of some kind so that you can um, you can put the different colors that you want on your palette. And then you would still have some space to blend as well. The great thing about watercolors is that if you do leave this and it dries, you can reactivate the paint by spraying it with some water um, or just dabbing a little bit of water onto the um, dried paint and it will reactivate the watercolor. So you can hang on to these palettes and you can use them over and over again and you don't have to um, worry about if they dry, you can reactivate them. So, so super great if you want to do um, the tubes. Another option are the liquid watercolors. I have the, the Dr. Phil Martin set. And the great thing about these is that they are light fast and archival, which means that if I make a painting, it will last a long time. 
um, and then um, it's very concentrated. Um, so that's another option and then of course you would just take a drop of this and you would add it to your um, palette. Now the thing with the liquid watercolor is that it's um, obviously it's going to be a little more running. Um, you can certainly you know add water to both of these um, but this one is just more concentrated. Same thing if it dries you can reactivate it with um, some water as well. An option that I have come to love when it comes to watercolor journals over the year are the traveling watercolor kits. So this Koya watercolor um, kit, it is um, a pocket field sketch box is what it's called. And I have used this just over and over again. I actually, I should probably um, clean this, but again, I don't necessarily have to. I can just spray my water on it and reactivate all of the paint. But it does come with a um, water cup or a water brush um, and then you can clean it with the sponges on the side. Um, a great way to kind of get these all you know juicy and ready to go is to again spray the water when you're ready um, to paint. However, if you're traveling with this, if you're going to be taking it to the park or taking it and doing some urban sketches or something like that, um, you fill this with water and then you already have your water with you. Um, so that is definitely a great option and I'll put the link below to everything. And then I have a uh, Winsor & Newton uh, paint palette too that is a little bit smaller. It has a smaller brush as well, but you can still add, you can put water in it um, and then take your water brush. You've got a little mixing palette and then you can just take these two things and go. You can leave. So you don't have to take any extra water or anything because you have the water inside of the paintbrush. So if you're going to be doing a lot of um, urban sketching or <clears throat> maybe going to parks and doing you know flowers and things like that um, landscapes and other things like that this is definitely the route to go and I would say over the years whenever I would have um, my um, Str Strathmore watercolor uh, journal I would take my Koya um, sketch box and this is all I would need to go and do some sketching outside and I could do it in my living room or I could do it in my bedroom or I could do it at the kitchen table and it's just something that I know that I can just take with me wherever wherever I go. So those are all of the paints. There's also, um, this is kind of like it, but there's the paint pans. And that's what this is. So there are paint pans as well. Um, it usually has the description on the side, if you can see that. But, um, but then they come in little um, paint pans. So then you can switch those out and you can make your palette any way that you want to. So you can really make it exactly, you know, exactly the colors that you want for your palette, which is a great option as well. So those are all of the paints. Okay, so just a few other things that you're gonna need. Obviously a spray bottle, and I got this at Hobby Lobby, actually in the mixed media section, but I'm, you can get bottles anywhere. And then if you are gonna be working at your desk, I would recommend that you have some water, um, a cup of water. Um, it can be in any container. Um, but definitely have some water on hand so that you can rinse and clean your brushes. It's oftentimes nice to have two, so you have one to clean your brush and another one to add clean water to your page if you need to. And then paper towel, good old paper towel. This is a great thing to have so that you can, um, you know, wipe off your brush if you need to. Um, or if you need to dab your artwork or anything like that, um, it's great to always have paper towel on hand. 
And then a pencil, I would recommend um, grabbing a pencil that has an eraser if you're going to be traveling because then you already have it. Or maybe you want to take a pencil bag um, and you can have your pens. You can have your pens um, so that you can do some ink and wash and your pencil and everything like that. You could even take, um, like I did in in the other picture, I used my white uniball. So sometimes these would be great things to kind of have on hand as well if you were going to travel with your watercolor journal. And then of course the paint brushes. So this is a watercolor uh, water brush um, and you fill this with water. This is the Sakura brand. Um, they come with different nibs that you can get, um, but these these ones come with, it's basically like a round, a round tip end. You can see that. That's mostly what um, the like to go things go. Um, but there's lots of options for um, different paint brushes. This is the rigor brush and this gives you um, just a way to do some fine detail or lines. Um, you've got your flat brushes, angled, angled brushes, your um, large round brushes, and so on and so forth. So there's lots of brushes that you can um, purchase. And um, if you have any questions about uh, which ones to start with, I, I would always recommend a round brush to start with um, or start with a, a water brush. Um, and it kind of takes the guesswork out of have having to purchase all of these paint brushes, especially if you are a beginner. Just sticking to one round brush in the beginning is a great idea, um, just so that you can kind of get used to the watercolor. Again, using the watercolor brush is fine. Um, you don't necessarily need to go out and buy all these brushes is what I'm saying when you're beginning and you're just getting ready to start. There's tons of videos on YouTube that explain the different techniques with the different brushes. Um, and I highly encourage you to go and explore those. But if you're going to be doing watercolor journaling, a lot of times the best thing to do is to get a watercolor kit that comes with the water brush and just start exploring and start um, getting used to this medium in that way. It's kind of a, a good starting point. So I hope that you are excited about watercolor journaling as much as I am. I suppose if you're watching the video, then that's why you're here, right? Um, so I just want to say that you do not have to get all of this stuff. If you just get um, uh, a watercolor, uh, a travel watercolor kit, um, a journal of your choice, um, you are you are at the right place to start. I do have a prompt list that I have available in the link below, and then I'm going to go over those prompts here on YouTube. So you can come back, make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so that you can get notified of when I put those videos out. And then you can kind of see how I work with these items to work in my watercolor journal. And then join me next week. I'm going to do three prompts off of that list just to kind of kick us off and get us started. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed learning how to set up your watercolor journal. Now, just go to the link below and get your watercolor journaling prompts. And next week, we are going to go through three watercolor journaling prompts together. So join me back here. Grab all your supplies and come back here and let's do some watercolor journaling together. Until next time, bye.